Hey there, everybody! Seth here. I've returned once again for another, at this point, monthly Monarch video. Well, monthly till we run out of bosses to cover, probably. I have to say, this episode is one I've been simultaneously anticipating, and yet dreading at the same time. I'm also gonna note, just in case any of you watching haven't played the game yourself, that we're drifting in some spoiler territory for this one, so... Yeah, run along out of here if that bothers you. That little warning aside... Today, we'll be looking at the Greed Duo. The Monarch of Greed, Avaricia, and its pact bearer, Kakeru Hasegawa. Kakeru is a character that hits pretty hard to my heart, and is probably one of my favorite characters just in general of all time. He really was the actual protagonist of the game, and I will never forget the developers for what they did to him and not allowing us to actually ally with him. The fight against him really drove daggers into me. <clears throat> uh, all that in mind, I very much want to properly show you what he's made of. I have a stupid theory that Kakeru is THE strongest pack bearer lore-wise, backed up by plenty of conspiracy theories and leaps in logic, but that's not what we're here for. The fact I even have the honor and joy of using him in my team is... very... fulfilling? I'm not sure how to describe it. I should maybe also mention I was recently able to actually get into the game files a bit and extract all the voice lines, so I now have an easy and reliable way to at least let you hear some of the more interesting ones, even if not directly in-game. Okay, I think I'm done rambling, though. Let's get into it. I went and got a little bit more footage for this video than normal this time around, so hopefully no one minds there ends up being a little extra. This one's for you, Doc. Oh, and just a quick note while it's loading, that his boss theme is absolutely the best song in the game. There's there's no debate on that whatsoever. Let's go, Ryotaro. It's moving time. Get ready. No walls Here nearby, so I'm afraid we won't be getting our close-up from this one, but. Wow. Kakeru has no doubt the best design in the game. It's very blatantly meant to be extremely similar to the protagonist, but everything from the color scheme, the clock on the back, and the smaller details just leaves me speechless, really. I don't intend to sound so incredibly biased, I mean, even though I am, but objectively, he's the only Black Bear boss design I like more than the Tono Sisters. Notice what recording, he also has more of a one-handed sword than MC's, uh largest dagger. I really like that they actually share the same overall design for their magic ears. It's symbolic in a way. <laughs> and now, the equally large elephant, or spider, rather, in the room. Avaricia certainly stands out compared to every other monarch we have and haven't seen yet. You'll notice these two have quite a few animation bugs going on in the video, which is annoying to say the least, but they do function perfectly fine. I also have to wonder how the designers decide on that demonic spider baby for the Monarch of Greed. It's probably explained in that limited edition art book I don't have. I'm pretty sure Kakeru's brother Mitsuru died around high school age, but I still wonder if the child Aberisha's form is taking is meant to be him. I don't know much else to comment on other than the fact the sounds it makes are very fittingly unsettling. I'll just turn things back if you die. Right though, on to the more technical stuff. Kakeru and Avarishi are the final bosses of the first act of the game. That said, they absolutely do not fuck around. Kakeru is someone even Akane would fear, boasting an amazing stat line that is actually higher than Avarishia's in nearly every way, with a massive 1200 HP and a 6 in movement that is only shared by Ira and a mini boss enemy far later in the game. This, coupled with the fact that Greed is the authority type that specializes in movement and positioning, gives Kakeru the best mobility in the game. Which is, ironically, handicapped by the layout of where he's fought. His stat pool is only the start, however, as Kakeru may, I shit you not, have the best moveset of all the Pact Bearer bosses. This shit actually gets me giddy with how absurd they made him. Let's break it down. Spatial Vibration and Schism for high multi-target damage in different ranges, Double Slash and Vital Strike for devastating amounts of single target damage, made better with having no HP cost due to bosses having the Costless Arts passive, Space Time Reset which nullifies all stat buffs on the target with 150 power and may possibly be a skill exclusive to him, and Blindside Slash allowing him to teleport up to 8 meters and snipe someone for a free 120 power back attack dealing huge damage. Don't want to teleport to the enemy? Don't have to! Summon enemy lets him bring enemies to him and Avaricia within the same 8 meter radius, putting them in a very bad position. 
As if that isn't fucked enough, he's also packing Transfer Pain and a boss exclusive healing skill in Recover, which heals him for around 400 HP for no cost. Greed skills, similarly to Lust, normally have very high madness costs, but this is completely negated by bosses being immune to going mad, as well as having Mind Over Madness. With his superior mobility, healing and damage transferring, wide and strong array of attacking skills, position manipulation, and ability to nullify enemy stat increases, Kakeru truly is a man of his own words. He'll be in the right place at the right time and do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. And I'm sure you all see I'm ignoring a very glaring thing among this list of attacks, but don't worry, we'll get to it. Next we have Avaricia, who is only slightly less, if not equal threat to Kakeru himself. It sports a very strong stat line of its own, and despite it having an admittedly shallow move pool, has its own deadly tricks and gimmicks. Its basic attack, Pierce, unlike the others, is actually very special and something we'll be going over. Other offensive options include level 3 Spatial Collapse, level 3 Jolting and Knockout Blow for inflicting Confusion and Disable, and a unique skill, Dimensional Rift. Just like Kakeru, it also has access to Summon Enemy, letting it pull in unsuspecting targets like a spider into its web of punishment. It, of course, also possesses the usual boss repertoire we've grown familiar with. Avarishia is a very strong monarch, complementing and supporting Kakeru in a variety of ways, having a lot of high impact moves that can easily wreak havoc on their foes. Back to Kakeru, we can now address the Atom Bomb in the room, his secret weapon of sorts. As you're all aware, Kakeru is a human unit and a pack bearer is capable of activating Awakening just like all the previous pack bearers. What I imagine most of you didn't know, and that I was unaware of until using it myself, is that he has an ace up his sleeve that only he and three other bosses possess. INTRODUCING TRUE RESOLVE! This broken beast of shit is something you're probably more familiar with from later bosses in the game, but surprise surprise, Kakeru indeed packs it himself, and just like what it says in the description there... My ego is who I am. I won't give up It triggers awakening off a single use! Not four, one! And this makes it incredibly easy to abuse all the perks of Awakening status, and it's even possible to infinitely keep them in Awakening state with good use of the pearls, effectively giving them a permanent 30% boost to all stats, and yet another way to ignore madness costs. Weirdly though, I've noticed though that his AI isn't the most prone to actually utilizing this incredibly powerful tool, and oftentimes will neglect you entirely outside of certain conditions. Usually having to do with how close you are to him, I think. Nonetheless, though, Awakening On Demand is extremely strong and makes an already frighteningly strong adversary even harder to deal with. The damage you can attain off Double Slash with this active is scary. Speaking of stuff mostly unique to Kakeru, we actually have some others we're going to talk about now, too. I'm not positive Space Time Reset is exclusive to him, but I do know it's not usable by MC's to read feed. It may possibly be a skill you can acquire on armor pieces, but just in case, I'm addressing it. With how strong buffs can be in this game, the ability to outright delete them from your opposition will always be insanely good. Coupled with it having a 150 base power of Kakeru's 280 size stat makes this a very deadly move. Lastly, we have to bring up Recover. Recover, as mentioned, is a skill that boosts with bosses that restores a fixed amount of HP to the user with no madness cost. In Kakeru's case, it's about a third of his max HP, making it a superior option to waiting and making him even harder to take down. Restore. Show me your ego! Despite the fact here they aren't playing in game here, I noticed in the files that similarly to the Tono Twins, Kakeru and every other non-playable enemy, including Monarchs, have a bunch of lines for normal party functions. Functions like deferring, being deferred to, and a lot more. I also think I mentioned in Kurama's video, all the Act 1 pack bearers also have voice lines implying their reaction to their Monarch dying as well. I do find it odd that the only bosses that actually seem to load most things properly in game are Akane and Samire, but I guess that's a rant for another time. I'll go ahead and play some of the more interesting ones I ripped in between some of the usual misc footage here of Kakeru absolutely destroying for you. We can go over Avarisha's special attacks afterwards as normal before we close out the video. For now, enjoy best character kicking some ass.
Let's take this elsewhere. Feel free to go easy on me. This is fine. It's fine. I'll bring you back. Rest in peace. You defeated Aparicia? I'll try, I guess. Guess I have to actually try. I'm a greedy guy! Don't hold back on me! This madness is nothing! Blah! Weak! Finally, I needed a break. Hopefully, at least some of that was entertaining or interesting for some of you. Let's now finish this off by talking about Avaricia's special attacks. I mentioned earlier his basic attack is special, so we're gonna start with that. It's a sweeping attack for starters, which lets it hit more than one enemy at a time, at the cost of it not being able to trigger assists. A lot of other moves do that, though, so what's the catch? Well... Avaricia's basic attack hits six fucking times! And because this is its basic attack, it's also used for counters and assists as well. This greatly discourages basic it at close range and makes every follow-up attack deal absurdly stupid amounts of damage if left unchecked. If that ain't enough, its unique skill Dimensional Lift, while not quite as good as some of the other Monarch signature moves we've seen, is also quite nasty as well. Check this out. Though it has slightly less power than its other attacking moves, it does boast a slightly wider range of spatial vibration while also having a decent chance to inflict Disable on the unfortunate target caught in the blast. Disable is probably the second most annoying status effect in the game behind Charm, so this can get problematic very quickly. There's admittedly not much else to say about it, though. It's a decent move all around, though not overall as ridiculous as Slice of Absurdity or Walking Thus ends our showcase and evaluation on Kakeru and Avaricia. While I'm annoyed at how easy his fight can be to his arena actively working against him, I have to give credit and adoration for the effort they put into designing him. It still pains me to think that the kindest character in the game was the shittiest outcome by the end of it. If I had a choice, I would've never fought him. He's very fittingly the strongest of any boss that we've looked at so far. And if you had a post-game variant at all, he's probably the strongest in the entire game. And I'm gonna stick to my guns that lore-wise, if he hadn't been crippled, he could've kicked everyone else's ass with ease. I'll Rest in peace, Kakeru Hasegawa. I hope I did you proper justice here. With this, we finally finished going over all the Act 1 bosses. Finally. But of course, there are still plenty more to talk about within Act 2 and 3. As for who's going to be next, I think I'll keep that a surprise. Thank you all very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and hope to catch you in the other Monarch videos to come still. I'll see you later.